Welcome to the Earth Science Classroom. This is the Earth Interior Series uh, playlist, and this video is looking at the upper mantle as a general overview. And I want to basically start with the physical layers. On the right-hand side here, you see um, different layers from the two layers of the core um, to the mesosphere, which is the largest part of the lower, the lower mantle, and the asthenosphere, lithosphere, and crust. The crust being the very thin exterior, like skin of the Earth, and what we're kind of looking at in terms of the uh, the upper mantle is we don't include anything about the core. So the core is basically not being discussed in this video, really. And we also not going to discuss the mesosphere, which is known as the lower mantle. So what we're looking at really is the uh, crust, the lithosphere, and the asthenosphere as the pure upper mantle. Now, in terms of, uh, these are in terms of physical layers, but in terms of the um, chemical layers, in terms of the composition, you look at the crust and the upper mantle, and you'd have to distinguish where that ends. And that's where I would um, you know, go back to where I would introduce the physical layers uh, to the students first, because then it's easier to differentiate between the upper and lower mantle and how they interact and how they don't interact and, you know, why there's a difference and what happens uh, in these layers uh, that creates these differences purely on a um, density um, and pressure and temperature um, attributes compared to just what it's made of in terms of the actual rock itself. So, so what we have here is that that um, upper mantle slice, we're looking in more detail. And if we're looking at uh, the pure physical layers, you have obviously on the surface, you have either continent land, which is roughly 70%, and the rest is ocean. And so you have the lovely crust, which is right here. And the crust is basically has two subdivisions. It has the oceanic crust and it has the continental crust. Now this video is just basically to show the students all of it combined and then we'll do different videos on each section in more detail with more facts and figures and comparisons. But what we should really uh, inform as the fundamentals or, or the basics is that the oceanic is pretty much going to be basaltic rock. And basaltic rock is a um, igneous rock. It is extrusive in its formation. So it is derived or, or crystallized and condensed from lava that is being forced onto the surface through different mechanisms and processes, which we call volcanism. And then the continent is a mix of, of granite, granitic rocks, uh, some diorite as well. And at the very bottom, we do have some basalt as well, uh, which gets a higher concentration the deeper you go, but it's mostly uh, granite. You might also hear the term uh, granodiorite for the uh, combination of diorite and granite. And we should also discuss the density because when it comes to um, applying this to plate tectonics and boundaries and movement of the crustal plates. Uh, looking at the density is very important. Density of the ocean crust is on average 3.0 grams per centimeter cube. Now I could use kilograms per meter, uh, but I tend to go with just the grams per centimeter cubed. It's not exactly the unit that you care about, but the actual number, okay? And then uh, continental is generally a little bit less dense. I wouldn't use the words lighter, I just use the words less dense, and it's usually 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. 
Now there is a range. There is a range. Um, the range is 2.8 to 3.3, and this one is um, 2.6 to 2.8. So there's definitely a larger range for the oceanic uh, crust, and that's based on how old it is and the basaltic magma that comes out. Now again, one of the basics that we have to discuss is the thickness. As you can see, it's not perfectly the scale, but we have a much, 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 much thicker, thicker continental crust versus a thinner, a thinner oceanic crust. Now that is important in terms of the geophysics, in terms of divergent plate boundaries and mid-ocean ridges and how the um, decompression melting and the oceanosphere is going to push up uh, through the ridge and create the, uh, the lava for the new ocean plates. And we'll get to that in, in future videos. But looking at the, the crust, the two different types of crust, oceanic and continental, and below that, or sitting as a part of it. So really, the lithosphere is the entire thing. The crust is a part of the lithosphere. An easy way to remember it is that lithos is Greek for rock. So it's the sphere of rock, basically. It is the outside exterior, the, the rigid exterior. Uh, rigid means that it's solid and resists movement, basically. It doesn't really move. We know this. And that's how we get things like earthquakes, um, the, uh, generally because of the elastic properties or the energy buildup within the rocks. And the lithosphere extends down to uh, 100 kilometers. The deepest the, the continents go, uh, on average, is about 35 kilometers, but can go as, as, deep, uh, as, as deep as uh, 100 kilometers, and that would mean the lithosphere underneath. So if, if I was talking about the lithosphere boundary, uh, I would have it doing this underneath the continental things and under, under large mountain ranges like the Himalayas or the Rockies, it can go as deep as 250 kilometers deep. But on average, it's 100. And then the ocean crust on average is between uh, five to seven kilometers deep. So it really is two different crusts, two different compositions, two different ways of forming these these crusts, and then sitting in a nice layer of lithosphere, solid rock. It is a silicate minerals, silicate rocks, which is uh, silicon based and mostly oxygen based. Um, again, the two most common minerals in the crust. So then we get down to right here, starting around, around 100 kilometers down to about 660 kilometers. Now this can be debatable. Um, some textbooks, some journals uh, relate to this leg going down to, down to a maximum of like 410 or even, you know, only last 100 kilometers. But we, I use the 660 because we can divide this into different sections uh, as needed. So this is called the asthenosphere. Now, astheno means not strong. So they call it the weak sphere. Now, it's still rock. This is still rock at a pretty high density. So the density is around 3.3. So it's denser than the oceanic crust. However, the temperature in certain areas does go over exceed the pressure and therefore there is weak areas are uh, where you get the melting of rock which refers to the weakness it becomes more what's called plastic or plasticity so it's able to move it has it has some sort of like deformation and movement within the the solid rock layer and it's where we do get the generation of magma which then feeds the surface volcanoes and hot spots and 
and convection currents, and that feeds uh, tectonic movements and crustal deformation. So this is an important area to concentrate on. And then below that, uh, you get the more solid mesosphere. But as before, this is part of the lower mantle and was discussed in a different video. And uh, meso or meso means the middle. And it's the largest like area within the mantle. So we're only looking really at the top, top, you know, 400 miles of a a 4,000 mile radius of of the Earth. So we're only really talking about the really top 10% um, of the Earth's interior, really. And this 10% is where really all the action happens if you discard the outer core and the EM field. So really, this is the most important area to really focus on with the students. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll look. Uh, hopefully, you can look at other videos where I go into more detail about the crust um, and each layer in turn. Thanks.